Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, a short notice uh, demonstration that we did because another uh, presenter was not able to make it. I hope you will excuse the uh, difference of content. We would like to show you how to add a compute node with Mirantis MCP. This is a live demo, so uh, bear with us. It's <laughs> going to take a little bit of time. This is uh, not the process that goes immediately, but we will show you the start how we initiate the process and then we will show you the end state what this looks like after the, uh, the whole thing is complete. Just to talk a little bit about uh, how we add a compute server or how we do anything in an MCP cloud. This is a system that is similar to a software development mechanism uh, CICD where we have uh, a code base that the, uh, where the uh, complete, a complete image of the cloud, a complete uh, representation of the cloud is put into a, a, a directory hierarchy and uh, salt, uh, salt stack is used to uh, implement the changes from that uh, directory structure into your actual cloud. So uh, if you see here, we have at the very first code comes in, it goes into uh, Garrett. It needs to be approved. Normally we have the Garrett component uh, removed for this specific presentation because it uh, would require uh, approval and this, uh, this is uh, just uh, muddying the waters. After Garrett uh, uh, receives the data, Reclass is building the representation of the uh, compute node in this case. This compute node is uh, there is a specific file that later on Jenkins uses to uh, create the compute node, to put the, uh, put the operating system on the compute node, to put uh, the um, Nova compute onto the compute node and all the components that are necessary, Cinder. Uh, and then at the end, um, the control plane needs to know about the compute node, and this is also done in Jenkins. So SaltStack, the configuration mechanism, Jenkins triggers uh, pipelines that use SaltStack to transfer the data to uh, the uh, re uh, respective environments. In our case, we only have one environment, but uh, this is normally you would have a staging environment and you would have production environments that uh, only will be receiving the, uh, the data and the, the changes after the staging environment has tested good. Yeah, and the, actually one of the most unique parts of this is that when you are registering a node, even if it's adding to an existing cluster or if you're creating the cluster for the first time, the node itself becomes registered with all of our operational support systems. And as a result of that, it's beginning to log, monitor, and alert from inception, from the moment that uh, MCP knows about it it's already pre-registered with that cluster and continues forward. So you can basically operate it basically from Stacklight as the monitoring and all the way back to the uh, Garrett and Jenkins side. Right, there's um, actually a couple of layers. Uh, the, uh, the lower layers um, provide the absolute basics. Then the middle layer uh, provides uh, some enhancement to those basics and the top layer provides things like node info and will inherit the uh, settings from the lower layers. For instance, uh, if you say, okay, all our nodes will have this functionality, that functionality, it will have a stack light on it, it will have um, Cinder in a specific configuration in it. You don't have to put that into each of the node configurations again. You just put the stuff in there that is unique to this node, uh, host name and the uh, domain name and things like that. Um, so, so here's the basic flow we're going to do. We're not going to do the first step because, quite frankly, we're using a virtual machine to represent a physical node. And we're just going to run through the modification of the two files that are required to establish this new node in the configuration. And then we're going to run the Jenkins job. 
and after that, we're going because it takes about 20 minutes to add that particular node. We're going to switch to a completed version of it, so you can see the difference as to what it started with and where it ends. Okay, so that's what right. we're. Right. So we're this doing. also shows that uh, the node, as such, is, does not have to be anything specific. It can be. Uh, um, it can be a virtual machine, it can be a hardware node. Uh, it just has to be something that can run the appropriate code base. Right. OK. So, so let's start with yours. Let's and start. And if you wouldn't mind, please switching. Perfect. Thank you. So can everyone see this? This is okay. Let's start from the beginning and make this a little bit larger. So the very first thing that we need to do, this is uh, unique to the um, to the virtual machine based nodes. We uh, have kvm.yaml, this is uh, the file that creates the uh, control plane and the compute nodes as uh, representations as virtual machines. So we do not have physical nodes that will be uh, added to this. So I am going to add a segment for this node. As you can see, the segment has only a host name and a whole bunch of inherited uh, 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 parameters like the cluster domain. The cluster domain is not set in here. The cluster domain is set farther down in the code base. So it will be inherited by everything that is going to be part of this. And uh, you see the only unique thing is the name of it in, uh, in the YAML file, the name of the node itself, and the type uh, OpenStack comp uh, compute. And this is also, there is a space too many. We need to, this is one of the things that you have to make sure that the, that the formatting is right. Okay, this is one, number one. And now we are going to tell OpenStack that the node is uh, needed. So we are going to, to the compute node section. And here you can see there's already one compute node set and we are adding a second compute node. And again, most of the stuff that is in there is inherited. The only real differences are again the name, uh, the host name and the network parameters that are set for this. This can be uh, automated, but we, we want, want to show it manually. Okay. Looks good. So the next uh, step is we are going to tell the uh, uh, rec this is a yeah that's it this, it's the uh, the, the reclass dot storage yes this will uh, this will run reclass and generate the files necessary to get to uh, to build this compute node right so, so the, I was just going to mention that every node that gets added. There is an entry in a, a directory called underscore generated inside of the node directory that defines the cluster. And that has a YAML file which contains all of the physical attributes of the particular server that Such you're going to Such as MAC address and so on. Exactly. OK, so now you see uh, we have um, 37 tasks uh, are done, and only one has actually changed something. This is uh, the one that generates a, a configuration file for this. The next step that we do is we are, this is uh, also unique to the KVM methodology, is um, we need to apply the state that will uh, launch that virtual machine and create it with an operating system. So this is going to take a little while. Uh, the reason why is because in the back, what's happening in the background right now is that uh, KVM is launching this instance uh, that is going to be our instance and is going to uh, launch it from an image. So, uh, and then it has to boot the instance, which will also take a little bit of time, which we can watch here. 
we have at the moment it's not up yet this is uh, this uh, it takes a little while until it until that catches this is uh, looking at the console of the compute node that is coming up but it takes about a minute or so uh, until the compute node is far enough that the console is even going to respond the KVM console so this is the point where we tap dance for about 30 seconds yeah Technically, we should have probably just yes, do the, right. <laughs> ballet. The crazy flexible. Yes. So, um, this obviously, this process does not only apply to adding compute nodes. This is uh, the same process is used for pretty much all the other uh, changes that you may possibly want to do to your cloud, changing configuration files, upgrading. Uh, versions of packages and so on. Uh, pretty much everything. I can show you later. On, or I can actually, actually, I can show you now. Um, this is the Jenkins representation. We have a, a large number of pipelines here. You can see, for instance, the third one from the top is the one that we are going to use, deploy OpenStack Compute Node. And uh, this is uh, a pipeline that is specifically made for this purpose. We have uh, update cloud. There's, um, this is when packages are, new packages come out. The packages are automatically distributed and are uh, used to upgrade the versions of, uh, of uh, software on the cloud. Um, updates old environment. This is, uh, this, uh, upgrade the control VMs is an important piece for the, for the control plane. Um, open contrail has a, a lot of, um, of pipelines that uh, you could possibly use. And also there's, it's possible to create custom pipelines. This is, it's possible to do custom pipelines for uh, uh, tasks that are either unique to your environment or are addressing something that is not part of MCP at, uh, where the pipeline does not exist, but this can be, this can be created. So where are we now? Let's see where it's. Okay, this should come. Oh, you're on KVM, is that correct? Uh, KVM 01, I should be, yes. So but, do a uh, oh, um, Sorry. That, that is the problem. Ah. Because if I... Uh, uh, hey, we're doing this live. Still not there? Uh, do a verse space list. CMP002. Oh, I need to do the, the complete name. Yeah, exactly. There we go. So you can see for right now, this is actually a, a, an a Ubuntu operating system booting. Um, and we're going to wait for just a minute for that to actually complete cooking. If the uh, operating system is not fully booted and you uh, trigger the Jenkins pipeline, it is, it's entertaining, but it's not, you're not going to be... It's very be, messy. Uh, it's not going to be uh, particularly useful for any particular purpose. So it takes, as, as the networking here is very slow, uh, it takes a little bit. Um, so while we're, while we're doing this, perhaps you want to show the OpenStack and the Grafana showing that uh, we don't have... Uh, right. This is, um, the, this is the OpenStack uh, uh, Horizon dashboard. Uh, here you can see we only have one compute node in there. And later on, we should see two compute nodes in this. And the same thing goes for Grafana. You see here, uh, we have only CMP001. And then it, uh, later on, you will see that the CPU usage, RAM usage, and disk usage for two nodes that is split. So finally, finally, Ubuntu ah. has uh, gone, gone beyond that stage. And now we should be very close to, uh, to living. Here it has cloud in it um, that's used to uh, set uh, parameters to make it uh, possible to uh, bind it into the cloud. And then uh, once this is, uh, has finished and shows us uh, the operating system, there we, there are. we go. OK, so now I can kick off our uh, add the add-on, oops, this was the wrong one, headline deploy, uh, here, oops, it's a compute node, this is the right one, but built with parameters. Obviously, we need to put a parameter here because uh, the, uh, Ubuntu does not know anything about that compute node. Um, uh, trainings.local. Uh, you misspelled, tra uh, yeah, there you go. 
Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Was there another typo? What, what was it? Missing N in Cody. Okay. Then, then we can actually show something here. We can show what happens when the, uh, when the build fails. So if you go to the console, you'll be able to see the failure on one, on one, yeah. And yeah. select that, and to the right, and console output. Console output. There you go. OK. So it's in the process at this point. And basically, all of these jobs have these stages built into them and will follow its sequential thing. That's why Jenkins makes a perfect candidate for this, because it's basically a step-by-step -step process to add or configure a node. And as a result, you're sort of able to do that uh, in an automated fashion, repeatably, that it's going to end up with exactly the same result, which is better than trying to do it by hand. Okay, so if you just uh, uh, go back to the Jenkins, uh, uh, hit Jenkins on the top and then go back into the job. There you go. Okay, then, there we are. Yeah, there. Okay, so we have one stage that has completed. This is, it does not need the host name, but it will here you Aha. can see. What the, this is exactly what happens we had a typo. if you mistype the host name, fail so with still the doesn't following know errors, and you can actually look at the logs here. This is. Yeah, so it, tr it tried to use it. You look at the console, basically. Yes, but, look uh, at the console. Yeah. Yes, yep. there's Finish a failure. failure, and that would be the, the exact, general of it. And this is actually the, the, the right uh, error message. No minion was targeted because we've, uh, we had the wrong host name in there. This was not going to, uh, to work. So okay. let's try this again. And this time with the right host name. Build with parameters. CMP002. Dot training. Dot local. Dot local. Is that right? That should be fine. Okay. So now, it, uh, now the All build right. should start again. And it will continue. Uh, I think uh, we have right. two minutes left, so we exactly. are going to show the end state. Can we please switch to the other console? Yeah. Okay. I don't want that. Okay. So when this is finished, what you'd end up with is it hooked into Stacklight and notice here you've got CMP001 and CMP002. That would be the uh, uh, new one that we've just added. Um, Bruce, can you first show the Jenkins uh, with the... So uh, the Jenkins job here. Yeah, yeah, you can see this is an endless uh, litany of what the, the, what the system does. And then uh, at the end, when it says success, uh, it has gone right. So this Jenkins pipeline actually so completed saw, properly. This was what failed before. And of course, in this case, and it, uh, it completed. And you can see there's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, this sets up the repository, upgrades the packages, sets up the networking for that node. Um, high state compute is what actually installs the components, the OpenStack compu uh, components. High state compute is an, end an endless list of things that need to be done to make a working compute node. And then update and install monitoring. That is, uh, that is what we mentioned before. Stacklight is uh, already on the node and is already able to see the node uh, as, uh, as an operational compute node. So as you can see, actually CMP002 has now shown up automatically from having run that uh, job. 
and CMP002 isn't just you know there uh, uh, as a new registry. We actually were able to immediately install an instance of VM on that, and just to prove that we're our fingers never leave our, our wrists as we do this. Uh, here's the overview of it and the actual console. And of course you see the login right there. So, Cirrus. Go Cubs, go. <laughs> Ta-da! Apparently somebody really loves the Cubs. Okay, so uh, this is basically how easy it is to add and modify the MCP deployed OpenStack environment. Um, you run through the steps, all of the steps in all of the processes to manage your cluster have, all have pipelines. So you're not really dealing with salt or any of the back end stuff. You're dealing with native mode tools that most people are familiar with. Garrett for authentication, Jenkins, uh, and then Grafana to be able to display the state of that node so that you can see what's going on with it and whether it's healthy or not. Okay? Right. So also in real life, you would not modify that file manually. You would check it out from Garrett, uh, modify the file on your computer, check it into uh, Garrett, have it uh, approved, and then uh, go from there. And that's it from us today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope it was instructional and entertaining, at least a little bit. <laughs>